What's going on everybody? Fetter here from 3D Print SOS. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to take my original VoxLab Aquila 3D printer and we're going to extend it with the Ender Extender Kit. Uh, Mark from Ender Extender, he sent me this. This is an Ender Extender Kit specifically designed for the VoxLab Aquila 3D printer. And this one is going to take our 200 by 200 uh, millimeter print bed to a 400 by 400 millimeter print bed. Absolutely massive. I'm super excited to see how this is going to compete with larger scale printers, especially because you don't have to start with such a large scale. You can get this printer, uh, play with it, get it all set up, get it working, and then buy one of these kits and make it bigger and take it to that next level. So I'm really excited to see how this whole thing works. Let's take this thing out of the box. Let's install it on the printer and let's give it a good test. And I'll see it back here for the conclusion. Let's get it going. So I've taken the majority of it apart, except for um, the actual 2020 that the X-axis rides on. Uh, however, these are all the pieces that are the width of the printer. Um, so here you see them side by side with the new pieces. Significantly longer, as you can see. And they all have the same mounting holes. So everything should just swap in. So essentially I took everything apart. You can see the printer in pieces. I took all the width pieces, the pieces that hold the width of the printer, and I'm gonna be replacing them with this. All right, let's keep going.
Okay, I realized right around here that I made a pretty critical mistake. I used one of the cables that was included as an extension on the main cable going to the motherboard from the power supply, but that cable is actually an extension for the bed uh, heater. Um, so that's totally my fault. Keep that in mind. That is not a part of the kit. As you can see, I was trying to see why the wire was actually so short and that's when it clicked. That's what that wire was for. This is why you look at the instructions before starting, not just during. I got really excited and just thought it was a quality piece, so I went ahead and used it, and here we go. It would have been significantly easier had I done it the right way, the way it was intended. So I must say, so far, everything that comes with the kit has been really straightforward and easy. The build is going really well so far, and now I just gotta do a couple steps back because of my own personal mistake. But I'll go ahead and fix the wiring in the kit, and then I'll keep going, uh, putting it together. We'll do some tests and I'll see in the conclusion, I'll be sure to address uh, this particular uh, situation to make sure that other people don't run into it. Hopefully you caught this video before going ahead and doing the build. All right, guys, I'll see you in a minute. All right, everybody, so there it is. Um, it is an absolute and utter beast. This thing is huge. It sits right next to my uh, previously large printer, a 330 by 330 custom machine that I put together years ago. But this thing just dwarfs even that. And an original Aquila can just sit on top of it and inside of it, and you wouldn't even know. Uh, this thing is just an absolute beast. Um, putting together the kit was actually really, really fun. I had a blast putting it together. It is really straightforward. As you saw and you heard, I did make a crucial mistake where I thought one of the wires uh, was for something else, but it was a bed wire extension. The bed wire with that extension is not only significantly easier, but it fits perfectly. If you didn't make that mistake, if you just followed directions like you should have, um, this kit would have been significantly faster to do. I actually, it took me probably double the time that it would have taken somebody else had I just paid attention and didn't get so excited, but it was hard not to get excited. But everything went together uh, really easily. Everything that you needed for the kit was in here. This particular kit is a 400 by 400. I did not go with the uh, taller uh, Z-axis. I went for the 150, $160 kit. Uh, which is extremely affordable in my opinion. I think with everything uh, invested in this particular machine, it is still just at around 500 bucks, uh, which is a substantial deal. I'm sure that if you look at other 400 by 400 millimeter uh, print bed printers, you will see that they're nowhere near that price. A lot of them are double, some are even triple. Um, 
This isn't necessarily a feature packed uh, machine when you get it like this, uh, but my favorite part about this kit is that you can incrementally improve this thing so much. Right now it's on a single Z, which shouldn't be too much of a problem. It's not that much heavier than stock, uh, but you can go dual Z, you can get a bigger heater, um, you know, you can just continue to improve on this thing, continue to make this thing uh, significantly better. That's what the beauty of this machine is. You can get a stock Aquila, print with it for a while, use it, get to know it, and then upgrade it instead of uh, you know spending that giant amount of money for a large machine in the first place. So I think that is a major strong suit uh, for something like this, and it's totally viable. Uh, you know, one of the things that I was worried about was having the stock uh, bed hardware on such a huge, large, heavy bed, but it seems to be perfectly fine. I went ahead and uh, uh, loaded up a 400 by 400 uh, version of Jari's UI uh, via Alex's fork. Thank you, Dante, by the way, for compiling this one for me. He already has a 400 by 400 uh, printer, so he just gave me his firmware. Thank you for that. You made it really easy for me. Um, but essentially, this has a 36 point uh, mesh uh, leveling. And I got to say, if you are going to be purchasing uh, something like this, even a 300 kit, I would highly suggest you still get the, a CR touch or a BL touch uh, with it as well and just have it together because uh, it still uses the stock hardware, which is meant for a much smaller bed. And you're essentially just sitting a significantly larger one on top. So I can imagine it can get funky pretty quickly, but so far, all I did was level it, hit print, and the first layer was absolutely perfect. So if something is warped on this or something is just not quite there, that bed level is gonna be your you know, giant, giant help in this particular case. So I highly suggest it. One thing I gotta say is, uh, I'm sure you saw in the video of me putting it together, I did have to fumble it a little bit. Uh, I, I had it in a small space, I was trying to film while doing it. Um, I would say give yourself some space. This thing is really, really big. Um, and sometimes I really wish I had a third hand to hold something else or pull something else. So it was kind of interesting being able to put this thing together and just having it you know, flipped upside down and on the side all the time. It was actually a really fun build. This is definitely not for beginners. If you are a beginner, I, I would say stick with the original for a while, put that one together, you know, play with it, assemble it, make sure everything is printing perfectly fine, learn uh, how to level a bed, um, learn all the settings, learn Cura, and then uh, go ahead and purchase this. Don't do this right away because it's somewhat challenging to take a, a bed, uh, I mean, take a printer apart and put it back together uh, perfectly. Um, and not only in the same size, but double the size. So that, that's something I definitely want to mention. But yeah, I highly, highly suggest you guys check out Ender Extender and their Aquila kits. Everything went together so easily. The belts are fine. The extensions are fine. Uh, all the hardware is fine. It was actually a really clever way to hold the um, shroud on for the power supply. I thought that was, that was kind of interesting. There's just a 90 degree a uh, little bracket that kind of holds it back where it needs to go so nothing shakes or wobbles. Uh, it, this is definitely a viable solution uh, if you need a larger printer on a budget for sure. Um, so in this video, I, I kind of want to stick to this. I want to talk about, you know, I wanted to cover the build process, what that was like, you know, some of the options. And then what I want to do for the next video is actually, if you guys would like to see something printed on this, let me know in the comments below. I definitely want to see some ideas. Uh, right now, one of the first things I kind of want to do is print a couple of my keyboard designs. I always wanted to print some of them, uh, some of the larger ones uh, in a, a single piece. Um, you know, I have this 330 machine uh, that I used to print them on, um, on an angle. Then I had to split them if they're larger, but this can print them. Uh, in one piece, I'm really excited about that. Keep in mind, I didn't go for the for the um, for the kit that includes the Z, uh, larger Z, uh, so it is capped at 250 millimeters. So 400 by 400 by two by 250 should be just massive. It could be, you know. Let me know what you guys want to see printed on this, uh, and I'll go ahead and give it a go for the next video. Really put this thing through its paces. So. 
Uh, keep in mind, this isn't a long-term review. This is literally my first print on the machine. It is going extremely well so far, but I'll hold off on a review. This is just my initial experience and reactions to everything that's going on and the build process. So far, I couldn't be happier. I think the $150, $160 price tag is unbelievable. Keep in mind that that price tag, for this kit at least, does not include the bed. Uh, although there's lots of options on the website that you could also include into the kit to make it easier for yourself. But um, I, I do know that Creality uh, beds such as this uh, fit right on here. And also you can go to a place like Home Depot or Lowe's and get a mirror cut uh, for as low as $30, $40. Another really uh, good idea actually because it is inexpensive and you can get it done locally somewhere. You don't have to outsource something like this from somewhere and have it shipped or you can just grab it right from the Ender Extender website. Now, with that said, in the description, you will find a coupon code to save yourself some cash. Uh, a mark from Ender Extender was nice enough to give this channel a uh, discount, so definitely go ahead and check that out. Uh, it will make this an even better deal, which sounds almost too good to be true, honestly. So. With that, I'll close. A uh, really fun kit to put together. If you're into putting printers together, if you're into tinkering, this is definitely the way to go. I do gotta note that uh, for now, at least H32 machines don't support uh, this firmware, so you wouldn't be able to do something like this uh, in terms of the custom firmware portion, at least on it. However, VoxLab recently announced that they're going to be releasing uh, their firmware uh, for everyone to be able to compile very shortly, which is really great. So soon support for H32, but for now, G32 and N32 machines uh, are the ones that you can apply this to. So uh, Ender Extender, check them out. Uh, check out the Discord, a link in the description. You can discuss things there. Go ahead and shoot me a comment. What would you like to see printed on this absolute beast? Um, and I think that's all for me, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. And uh, I'll see you down in the comments. Later.